Dr. Mark Norman. for me, I was drinking coffee and eating popcorn in the back. <laughs> so, it was a little weird to hear all that. Uh, oh boy, here we are. We are doing it, huh? How are you guys? You seem miserable. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you look like nice people. All right. Any minorities here? Does anyone else have that one friend where you go to a bar to try to meet some girls that doesn't go too well, and like 20 minutes into it, they just go, screw this, let's go to a strip club. <laughs> I don't get that logic. To me, that's like going fishing, not catching anything, and being like, screw this, let's go to the aquarium. <laughs> it's the same thing. Never got that. Um, one of my friends, he's, uh, he's really big into Indian women. That's his new thing. And I was like, really, what's that all about? And he goes, well, you know, I ate a lot of curry as a kid. <laughs> like, how the hell did you get there? That doesn't make any sense at all. I ate a lot of baby food as a kid. I'm not a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> I am a big fan of the ladies, which is weird because when I was a kid, I hated girls. When I was like six years old, I thought girls were gross, thought they were dumb. And you know, you're allowed to hate girls as a kid, but that's really the only group a kid's allowed to hate. Because if I was a six-year-old that hated Puerto Ricans, <laughs> that would be weird. You know, if I was like, hey, Mom, I hate Puerto Ricans, she would never say, oh, you'll like them one day. <laughs> I'll like them a lot. <laughs> Any Puerto Ricans here? My friend, he likes, he likes the Indian women. He's, he's what uh, women were referred to as a creep. Uh, we went to a bar recently and this girl called him a creep. I don't like when girls call guys creeps. I, I don't get offended by it, but it, it's just redundant. We're all creeps. There's no need to pick us out. Every one of us is sick and perverted, you know? We're all, some of us are just better at hiding it. Yeah? Like I was talking to this girl at a bar, she was like, thank God you're nice. That last guy was a real creep. I was like, why? What'd he do? She's like, he tried to have sex with me. I was like, holy hell, what did he have to do with me? That's a fun word, creepy. I use that word a lot. Uh, that's a fun word because that's a word that's changed with age. To a kid and to an adult, the word creepy means completely different things. Like to a kid, creepy is like spooky, like a cemetery is creepy. To an adult, creepy is like a guy on a bus who winks at you while eating a banana. <laughs> creepy thing about me, I, I, I love Jewish women. I don't know where that came from or what, what happened there. And any Jewish gals here? I guess I wouldn't speak up either. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't care about the religion. I just love a nice Jew face on a lady. I don't know. It makes my knees weak. It's a huge thing in my mind. I love it. I was actually lucky enough to date a Jewish girl. Uh, we were talking about getting married and her dad made us break up because I'm not Jewish. And I was like, come on, really? Like, seriously? I live in New York, I have curly hair, I'm circumcised, I'm a comedian, I'm like, right there. <laughs> but still, he was like, no, no, my daughter will only marry a Jew. I want my people to live on, I want my culture to live on. Jews are about living on. That's when I thought, man, Jews must be really jealous of gay people. Because gay people can't even reproduce. Yet they keep popping up. <laughs> That's incredible. That's amazing. No other group can do that. It's like a superpower. You know? like, like Jews are sitting around like, you gotta marry a Jew, you gotta marry a Jew, and the gays are like, we'll be fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. We are doing okay. Not a religious guy. Uh, not religious at all. If you look at any religion, Jewish, Muslim, Catholic, Baptist, whatever it is, the names are always so intense. You know, it's always like Muhammad, Moses, Judas. 
Makes you wonder if the names weren't as intense, would the religion be as effective? You know, like if Jesus' name was just like Trevor. <laughs> I would drink the blood of Trevor. Gross. Are you get one of those braces? What would Trevor do? <laughs> Not a religious guy, although I although I do find religion funny. Like it's interesting to me that in the 50s, rock and roll is considered the devil's music. Now this Christian rock. <laughs> I guess Christians go that old motto: if you can't beat them, ruin it. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, just hanging out. I went back home. I'm from Louisiana originally. I'm from New Orleans, and uh, went back home to see the folks. Uh, I was introducing this girl to my dad. And she was like, oh my god, Mark, why didn't you tell me your dad was so handsome? Because I don't know when to slip that into a conversation. <laughs> also, I didn't know you were the type to be in the dad. So what the hell's going on here? Like, hey, my name is Mark. I'm from New Orleans. I'm 28 years old. By the way, my dad, huge dilf. <laughs> Yeah, me and my dad, we don't have a good relationship. Uh, we don't really talk, we can't really open up, we can't really be ourselves around each other. Like, uh, I know some friends who actually smoke weed with their parents. That blows my mind. If I watch a movie with my parents and there's a nude scene, we don't talk for a week. <laughs> I can't imagine doing drugs, that's crazy. You know? And even though me and my dad have this distance between us, when I was a kid, he still felt it was all right to walk around bottomless. <laughs> Anybody else's dad do that? I think that's why I'm a comedian today. I really messed my head up, you know? And what I like about the whole bottomless thing is he still wore the t shirt. <laughs> still wore the shirt. What's the logic there? That means at one point he was naked in front of his dresser going, I better cover up. <laughs> well, you covered the wrong half, Pops. Your shoulders aren't the problem, it's your giant dad cock. <laughs> He's wearing no pants, t-shirt, shirt says, world's greatest dad. <laughs> Got good parenting up top, down low, scarred for life. Right. Thanks a lot, dad. Thanks a lot. I am from, has anyone ever been to New Orleans? Hey, alright, a couple alcoholics here, nice, nice. You been? What'd you go for? Ah, good time, good time, yeah. Sorry, I was just picturing you guys having sex. I don't know why. Uh, look good, well done, sir. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 I'm from there. A lot of booze down there. Um, I drink a lot still, I'm probably gonna get a little tonight. And uh, I get the worst hangovers, I get the like, crazy hangovers. I'm out all day, I'm in bed. Lights are out. I, I hate everybody. I hate myself when I'm on over, you know. Uh, and people always tell me, like, oh, Mark, if you want to beat a hangover, you just got to drink water throughout the night. You know, while you're boozing, just drink water throughout the night. Well, drinking water throughout the night is like a condom, you know? At first, you're like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Then once you get in the middle of it, you're like, ah, screw it, let's keep going. <laughs> I get the worst hangover. So people always tell me, Mark, you got a real drinking problem. You got a real drinking problem. It's like, no, I have a hangover problem. All right. Drinking, I'm good at, you know? And I say, well, I know you're thinking, well, Mark, booze leads to the hangover. It's like, yeah, but having sex leads to children. But if I had a kid tomorrow, you'd be like, oh, you got a real sex problem. i say, no, you have a son, that's your problem. Right? Hangover problem, not a drinking problem. You know, when I'm, when I'm hungover, I miss appointments, I miss meetings, I miss job reviews. When I'm drunk, I show up places I wasn't even planning on going. <laughs> I'm from the South. A lot of misconceptions about Southerners up here in the Northeast. Uh, like I was talking to one guy recently, he's like, dude, you're from New Orleans? Are you racist? I like, Jesus, is that what you guys think about us? And he goes, well, I've also heard you guys have good hospitality. That's a weird combo. It's like every white guy sitting around in the South going, ah, jeez. A couple of black guys moved into the neighborhood. I got a big pound cake. <laughs> Come on. I, uh, I moved.
moved up to New York with a with a with a girlfriend. We we moved in together. I'll never do that. Uh, <laughs> big mistake. You guys live together? <laughs> All four of you, one bedroom. Huh? Uh, be a fun reality show. Uh, whose teeth are these? That would be Yeah, just moved in. You know, it starts out fun with a girl. It starts out fun with a little girl. At first, you have sex in every room of the house. You know, so we had sex once. It's a studio. Uh, it's all over after that. Uh, she wants. She wants to get married, which is terrifying. I'm, I, I can't do that. She always tries to scare me into it. He's always like, "Well, Mark, aren't you scared of dying alone? Aren't you scared of dying alone?" And I'm like, "No." I'm scared of dying in a group. Because that means something really bad happens. Yeah. Make it easy. Thank you. She's pushing marriage hard, man. She's pushing marriage on me, who I push the threesome on her. You know, it started out as a joke, now she's hinting at it every day, just like I did. And uh, when you think about it, marriage is kind of the girl's version of the threesome. You know, guys and girls, we see it the same way. Like, we both dream about it as kids. They're really hard to plan. And the big question is, who do you invite? <laughs> this is my special day. <laughs> I will say this though, the sex is terrible. <laughs> Welcome. I love when an attractive girl walks in on that sense. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Um, I'll say this, that we're both pretty bad in bed, but she's trying to get better, right? which I appreciate. I caught her reading a Cosmo recently. I look over her shoulder and it says, please your man in bed by giving him compliments. I was like, all right, it's going to be great. Next time we have sex, she's going to be complimenting me, which she did. But the compliments weren't sexy, so it's just awkward. I'll give you an example. We're going at it. And I flip her over and she goes, good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you, getting compliments in bed sounded good in theory. But you never want to be in a sexual situation with a woman and have her say, not too shabby. <laughs> little adult creepy. I just always say the wrong thing with girls. I do. Like, I, I'm probably going to hit on you later. I'm going to ruin the whole thing. You know? I, 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 this one girlfriend I had, she was like, so Mark, how hot am I on a scale from 1 to 10? Oh, jeez. Uh, all right, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this question right. I'm gonna crack the code on this. Now, I, I wanted to be realistic yet generous, so I said, uh, "Well, honey, you're a whopping 8.5." She was pissed. Yeah. <laughs> she yelled at me, and I was like, "Well, you know, I'm a little upset about it myself." <laughs> you to be attacked. <laughs> Don't be mad at me, I'm just delivering the news. You're not going to be surprised by this, but after that I got something I haven't gotten in years, got the old blue ball. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I hate the blue balls. The worst part about it, she was like, what is that? What is blue balls? I don't get it. What is that? Can you explain it to me? What is that? And the only way I could explain it to her, the only way I could make her get it, was by saying, hey, did you hear what happened to Susie? No, I can't say that. She was like, what, what, what happened to Susie? I was like, look, I can't. She's like, what, you can't just start it up? I'm physically like, look, I can't. She's like, please, please, I'll do anything. I'm like, that's blue balls. <laughs> sit right there, sister. That's what we call it, the blues. Uh, oh, yeah. One thing I never got about the whole relationship thing of these guys who complain about their girlfriends when it's that time of the month. I go, she got a little cranky for a week. You get a little moody. You do realize that means you're not a father, right? <laughs> Seems like a pretty good trade to me. I love the period. Bring on the menstruation, I say. <laughs> you know, when my girlfriend gets her period, it's that same feeling like right after you pay the rent. <laughs> You know, you're like, 
this month is gonna be fun. All right. I saw you tap in. Are you menstruating? All right. It is true, it is true. Put that towel down, huh? I, um, I, uh, I've never paid for sex, pretty proud of that, never paid for it. Um, I don't know, I've always been bad with the whole sexual thing. Like, was anyone else disappointed when they found out what abstinence meant? I remember being a kid sitting in sex ed class. The teacher was like, you can't have sex, you're gonna disease, you're gonna grow pregnant. But there is an alternative. It's like, Jesus, thank God we have an alternative. We have something. We have something. We have something. And she's like, abstinence. I'm like, what is that? What is abstinence? What is that? It sounds kind of hot. What could that be? What, that? what? What? Not doing it at all? This is the alternative? How is that? Decaf is an alternative. Margarine is an alternative. You know, I've never been to a diner and been like, yeah, on this toast, I don't really want any butter. Do you have a butter alternative? They never say yes. Nothing. <laughs> it's not an alternative. When I also an alternative rock station, it's not silence. It's different kinds of rock. Oh boy. But yeah. Never pay. Are there are there uh, prostitutes in this town? I'm just curious. Never been here. Is that, do you, so you know who you are. Is that that I've found. That you found. Maybe they're hiding. Who knows? Um, <laughs> sir, have you, have you lived here your whole life? And he is four as much as him. All right, well, hey, that's a sign of a good town. Things are going well. All right. What's that? You don't have a good board on. I have great board on. It's not a good talent. It's one of those weird talents. It's like it doesn't really help it unless you really need it. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I've never paid. I don't think there's anything wrong with paying for sex. I want to say that now. Like, you know, sex is just a need like anything else. Why is that the one need we have where it's frowned upon if you pay for it? We don't do that with any other needs. No one's ever like, oh, come on, man. You paid for those groceries? You're a young guy. You should be farming. Get out there. Hit the field. One of my friends, he loves the old massage with the happy ending. <laughs> That's always a fun one. Uh, not a big fan, of, I don't get that, you know, because to me, the massage is already happy. You're gonna walk away feeling good anyway. You know, what is it Christmas and your birthday? Take it easy. You know, to me, it makes a lot more sense happening after a bad win. What, that, that piss off the prostitutes? <laughs> I guess work is starting. <laughs> I can't even think of any more that's guys and girls. A lot of likes. <laughs> Hopefully that was women. Well, that makes the joke better. Um, oh, right. Wow. Usually prostitutes can take a, take a little ribbing, but uh, must be those sensitive whores. <laughs> All right, we'll move it along. Um, Comedy's fun. I've been in some weird situations, though. I did a show at, uh, in Philadelphia recently. The show went great, but uh, the show ran way too long, and I missed the last train back to New York, so I had to sleep at the train station. Pretty scary. And I'm laying on a bench, and a cop walks by me, and I swear to God he says this. Keep your guard up. <laughs> he keeps walking. Hey, keep your guard up. You're guarding this place. You're the guard. Will do. That's how that's going to Do your job. I'm doing my part here. I'm terrified. Do your part in guard. You know, it's a cop's job to prevent crime, not warn us of it. You know, we can't have cops walking around like, watch out, he's got a gun. <laughs> hey, she's back. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Comedy's fun. I, I did a show at an old folks' home last week. Uh, it's a little like this, a little lively. And, uh, 
one of the old ladies really took a shine to me. She was like, come here, son, how old are you? I was like, well, I'm 28. She goes, oh my God, you're a baby. You're just a little baby. You're such a baby. I was like, hey, take it easy, lady. A baby's from zero to three. I'm over a quarter of a century years old. I can never do that to her. How old are you, ma'am? 95? Ah, oh, you've been dead for years. You're in the ground. You're a zombie, sister. So we moved in together. And, uh, going well. This is a nice gal. But this is the best job I've ever had. I've had so many bad jobs in my life. Uh, I used to work as a janitor. That was a rough gig. Mopping floors, cleaning bathrooms. Nobody looked me in the eye, nobody talked to me. I worked at this swanky law office in Midtown, Manhattan. I remember one day I was mopping the floor and a businessman slipped. And he goes, Jesus, man, if the floor is wet, you gotta put a sign down. I'm like, I'm mopping in front of you. <laughs> I am the sign. You know the old guy on the sign doing this? That's me, but in 3D. You know the guy slipping on the sign? That's you. And the worst part was my boss chewed me out after. He's like, come on, Bart, you're embarrassing me out there. I'm like, you're embarrassed? I went to college. Let me handle this one. You know, then he'd say stuff to me like, hey, would you learn how to mop? I don't know, Fantasia? <laughs> Hey, I don't fit in on a day job. I've had a million of them. That's not for me. You gotta be very appropriate, very PC. I'm not a PC guy. I'm a fun guy. I'm a comedian. You know, like last job I had, I was talking to this guy at the front desk. And I was like, hey man, what's the name of that tall guy on the fifth floor? The really tall black guy? And this guy goes, whoa. I don't see color. I was like, really? Did you really just say that? Did that really just come out of your face? So I looked this guy right in the eye and I was like, hey man, it's cool. Racism is a touchy issue. I used to date a Spanish girl. That was fun. Uh, quite the spicy Latina. And uh, we had a good time. I would always hang out with her and her family. I'd be the only white guy there. And I would get into what I call white guy trouble. Uh, that's awkward racial tension. Only a white guy can get into. I remember one time I was at a, a, one of her family reunions. And some guy handed me a beer. And I said, ah, oh, gracias. And he goes, are you just saying gracias because I'm Spanish? And I was like, oh boy, white guy trouble. <laughs> Keep it together. And I was like, no, I'm just saying gracias, thanks for the beer, you know. And he goes, you don't have a lot of Spanish friends, do you? And I was like, no, I don't. I don't have a lot of white friends either. You want to rub it in? <laughs> no, why do we always jump right to racism? I was like, you don't have Spanish friends? You must hate Spanish people. No, I'm just unpleasant to be around. <laughs> I've killed some Spanish friends. I've killed some white friends. I'm pretty low with it, all right? Take an easy Spaniard. That hurt at work. Uh, I've met a lot of people at work. I just I would go to work and I'd do comedy my whole life. Uh, tell me if this makes sense. Do you guys have day jobs here? Everybody has a day job? Yeah, there you go. What do you do? Uh, what do you do there, Scarf? Scarf. <laughs> I work for her. You work for her? So you're the pimp. <laughs> Independent. Work for people with disabilities. Oh, that's a good gig. Yep. All right, all right. I was going to make a terrible joke there, but you I held back. No, no, no. Uh, well, that's good. Good. But you work in an office? Yes. Yeah. 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 Those fluorescent lights, the bad coffee, then they kind of suck your soul well, away. Well, we got Keurig good. Yeah. We, we all bought Keurig. So yeah. yeah. All right. Your all coffee's right. good. Well, let me ask you, let me ask you this. Does anyone else feel like at their day job, they're getting paid just to be sad? <laughs> you know what I mean? You go to work, you, go to work, you clock in, you're really sad, you clock out, you feel great. You're like, wow, that must have been why I was there. <laughs> you can pay to be sad. That's why you're only allowed to skip work, is when it's something sadder than work. <laughs> and then your boss is like, well, you ain't going to be here. You're going to be sad somewhere else. You're going to be sick, jury duty, death in the family. You know, and then you have a baby, like, Jesus, take a month off. Your life is over. <laughs> Hey, Denise, this is how my last job review went to get my last office job. 
Well, Mark, can you do Microsoft Office? I can. Are you familiar <laughs> with Excel? I am. Can you do PowerPoint? I can. You're hired. This is how it should have gone. Well, Mark, can you make meaningless small talk throughout the day? I can. Are you familiar with looking busy even though you have nothing to do? <laughs> I am. Can you fake a smile even though you're dying inside? I'm <laughs> right now.